Okay, so you've taken a look at the user interface. You've played around with your docs. You know how all of the buttons on screen right now work. Let's go into the OBS Studio settings. Now, this is where new users tend to get a little alienated by the settings menu. It's not like you can go to other applications like Word or PowerPoint and use their settings as reference. Streaming settings are incredibly unique there are things there that if you've never used a stream software before, you will not recognize, but that's okay. I'm here to take you through all of the basic settings today. In the future, we'll do all of the settings, all the advanced settings, but today I'm going to show you the most important parts and why you need to understand them. So there are two ways of getting into the settings menu. One, you go to the file drop down menu in the top left hand corner and click settings. Or if you have your control dock, you can also go to the bottom right here and click settings here. Be careful not to click exit. Let's have a look at the general tab, the first one. This is where you can change your language or theme. My theme is on the dark theme because I think it's a little bit easier on the eye, especially when you're using it for long periods of time. Uh, but you can change that theme to whatever you want, have a play around with those. Uh, these confirmation dialog settings. Basically, this means when you click a very important button in the software, it's going to ask you if you meant to click that button. So let's have a look at the first one. Show confirmation dialog when streaming starts. If I click start streaming and this box is ticked, it will say, are you sure you want to stream? So this is a very, very good option for people who accidentally click buttons very often or are maybe a little bit clumsy. So make sure these are turned on if you want to confirm everything you're doing. Uh, another important setting in this tab is source alignment snapping. This means when you put a source into your preview area, when you drag it around, it will snap to the edges of the screen, to the edges of the preview area. Or if you have another image next to it, it will snap to that. It means that you can make things horizontally and vertically consistent and basically just look a little bit better and more uh, smarter on screen, I guess would be the word. The rest of these will come on to uh, in due course. Now let's go to the second tab, the stream tab. This is where you are setting your settings telling OBS Studio where to send your video footage. So for me, you can see I've got YouTube chosen as my service because I stream to YouTube. Server is a primary YouTube ingest server. And I have connected my account. Even though this says connect account, it is already connected. What this means is you can sign into OBS Studio with your streaming account, with your platform account, and it will automatically send your video footage to that platform. So for example, if I go to service, I can choose any of these online services to stream to Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Restream, Twitter. Let's say I want to stream to Twitch. I'm going to click Twitch. I'm then going to click connect account. And when I click that, a Twitch menu will pop up and say, please use your email and password to log in. I'll, I'll log in. And hey, presto, you're ready to stream on Twitch. You don't need any stream keys. You don't need any other information. You just need to log in with your account and you're good to go. We will come to stream keys a little bit later on because they can be useful. But for now, not particularly important. Just log in with your online account, whichever website you want to use. Facebook Live doesn't have the direct connection yet. Uh, we'll come to that a little bit later. But if you want to do YouTube or Twitch, which are the primary streaming methods online, you can just click connect account and you are ready to go. On to the output tab. Now, this is basically where, where you choose the quality of your stream how much information you want to send out of OBS Studio to these online platforms. So we're going to keep the output mode on simple for now. If your output mode is on advanced, switch over to simple for now. Streaming, video bitrate. This is how much information, how many bits you want to send to the platform. Now, this is limited by your uh, by your internet connection, by the speed of your internet connection. If you have a very fast internet connection, this could be up to 10,000, 12,000 kilobytes per second. If you have a very slow internet connection, it might be 2,000. For now, I want you to set this to 3,500. This is a kind of middle of the road kilobytes per second. It will give you a standard quality. We'll talk about more, we'll talk more about this in a short while. Encoder. This is the part of your computer that you want to encode the information. 
you should have two options here. You might have a few more, but there will definitely be two options here. You'll have Times 264 and you'll have NVENC hardware. Times 264 is your CPU processor. Hardware NVENC is your GPU, your graphics card. Now, if you're playing a very, very high-end game that uses a lot of GPU, a lot of uh, graphics power, you might want to set your streaming processor to your CPU because it's using less, it's got less stress on it. And vice versa, if you're using a software like Photoshop or, I don't know, Premiere Pro, which uses a lot of your CPU, you might want to set this to your GPU. We'll talk about this in, in a little while. For now, I would have this stuck on your GPU, your MVENC, and we'll discuss why a little later on. Audio bitrate is obviously the quality of your audio. Stick this to either 96 or 128. It's not going to make a massive difference to how your computer performs, so maybe just keep it on 128. Uh, advanced encoder settings, we'll come into a little bit later on. Recording. Now, we haven't talked about recording yet, but OBS Studio, not only can you stream with OBS Studio, you can also record everything in your preview area and it will be saved as a video on your PC for you to, I don't know, upload, watch, use as you wish. Uh, so let's take a look at this recording path. This is where your recordings will be saved. I've chosen Windows 10, my standard videos file. So whenever I click record in the bottom right hand corner here, it will save the video to my normal videos file. Recording quality, you have some presets here. Obviously, everybody wants to record in lossless quality. However, that's going to create files which are tens, hundreds of gigabytes in size. So high quality is usually, usually a good enough setting. And in fact, all of these videos that I'm recording for these tutorials are done in high quality file size. So stick with that. Obviously, you can change your recording settings and to whatever file format you want to change to mp4 mov flv that's entirely up to you encoder again what encoder do you want to use to generate your recordings to to uh to, to bear that process that load um and then muxer settings don't worry about those we'll come on to those a little bit later on to audio uh the important settings in this channel are going to be where you want your desktop audio to come from so for me it will be my realtek r audio one of these in this list of settings is going to be your audio driver. We'll talk about this a little later on, how to identify your audio driver. For many, many, many PC users, it's going to be Realtek Audio. So if you do find that option, click on that and that will be your desktop audio. I'm going to keep this though for now on disabled. I'll explain again in a little while. And also if you have a microphone installed, you're going to want to choose that from this drop down menu here. Mine again is Realtek R Audio. Yours might be a little bit different. And onto video. This is where you'll choose the size and the resolution of your video that you want to upload to your platform. Your base resolution. This is the resolution of your monitor. So if you know the base res if you know the canvas resolution of your monitor you can just put that in here get the drop down menu and choose it's normally 1920 or 10 uh, or sorry it's normally 1080 or 720 but it could be larger to check you can just go to your desktop right click and choose display settings it will tell you in there output scaled resolution is what resolution you want to upload at now you might think hey ben if my canvas resolution is 1920 and 1080, don't I want to upload at 1920 and 1080? Well, yes, that's normally what people do. But if you have a slow internet connection or your CPU is struggling to use OBS Studio, downscaling this to 720 would actually help the performance of your computer and would make your stream look better. So as long as you downscale to something with the same aspect ratio, make sure these numbers on the right here are the same, your stream will still look fine. So actually, I think all of the ones in this list are 16 by 9. Yes, they are. So you can't go wrong. What I'd say is to start with, let's keep it the same as Canvas. If you do continue to have problems, then we'll downscale that a little bit later. Talking of downscaling, you will use a specific filter to do that downscale just for now and pretty much forever keep this on bicubic doesn't matter now here is a big setting that people get a little bit crazy over this is your fps value if we drop down the menu you'll see that you have quite a few options here for your fps value 
The industry standard right now for streaming on YouTube and Twitch is 60 FPS. We will only make that lower if your CPU is struggling to handle your streaming. So I would have 60 or 30, 60 or 30. You could, if you're doing in real life streams and streams that don't have a lot of quick moving images in them, 30 FPS is fine. If you're streaming gaming, 60 FPS is definitely recommended. Hotkeys. Now, we're not gonna go into this at all right now, but this is one of my favorite menus in OBS Studio. Basically, every process, every button in OBS Studio can be linked to a button on your keyboard or mouse. This means that everything becomes smoother, easier to do, and you save a lot of time. We'll come to hotkeys a little bit later on, but keep these in mind, they are very helpful. And of course, advanced. Now the advanced tab is obviously, as it says, advanced settings. Um, we're not gonna go and make any changes to these right now. There are a few little things that you might want to change in the future, but for now, leave these as they are. Changing some of these can affect the performance of your application. So leave them as they are for now. Uh, click apply, and then I'm gonna click cancel because I don't want to save the settings, but click apply and click okay. And that's your OBS Studio settings. From here, we are all set and ready to go to set up a consistently good-looking stream.